be the time for questions, if there are any. Yes? Um, for X and G. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to do it on my step. Okay, let's take a look here. Uh, so I'm plugging in negative 2 here into G, right? Next function we call G. We have 2 times negative 2 squared plus 6 times negative 2 minus 1. I like to use parentheses. They, when you write them right next to numbers, they need multiplications. So that's a nice little shorthand. Keeps everything, especially those negative signs, kind of organized where they should be. Do you have a question? I'll, I'll take it for this one, just for this first one. Okay. Uh, so we have this thing, this what used to be called x, now we're calling negative 2. We're specifically plugging negative 2 in there. And what does it mean to square a number? Okay. Take it to the power of 2, Aiden. Well, that. Yeah, well, by itself. By it, itself. Right? And what is itself right now? Negative 2. So we are going to multiply negative 2 by negative 2. A lot of times people will do 2 times negative 2. That's not a number times itself. That's one number times the negative version of that number. So all together, right here, we have negative 2 times negative 2 times positive 2. And negative 2 times negative 2 is what? Four. Positive 4. Negative times negative is positive. We have 2 times 4. That's 8. And 6 times negative 2. We're going to add whatever that is. Twelve. Negative 12. Add negative 12. 1, 8 minus 12, negative 4, minus 1, negative 5. Would that be 6? Would, would, would be 6? 8 minus 12. Mm -hmm. 8 minus 12 is negative 4. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Another question? Any other questions about this one? No? All good? They all agree? Okay. Uh, 2 to the third power plus 4 times 2 squared plus 2 minus 2. All right. Here's something I want to point out here. An example like negative 4 times 2 squared. I'm not going to take negative 4 times 2 and get negative 8. I'm not going to do 4 times 2 get positive 8 and then square that. Right? Because the order of operations that we use puts exponents before multiplying. So we're not going to multiply the 4 to 2. We're going to take 2 to the second power first. Because we agreed to. All right, so we'll go with that. Uh, negative 4 times 2 times 2, 2 to the second power. 2 to the second power is 4. Uh, what does raising something to the third power mean? I'm multiplying it three times. I'm multiplying it three times instead of two times, doing three times. Two times two times two. That'll be eight. So whatever that turns out to be. Plus two minus two. Plus two minus two. Zero. Zero. So we can even just forget about it. Okay. Uh, oh, this is a plus. that down wrong. Okay, so 8 plus whatever 4 times 4 is, right? Because multiplication comes first. Right? I'm going to add 8 and 4. We're going to multiply 4 and 4. That's 16 plus 8, 24. Yes, yeah. I thought it was a negative 1 up there for x. And I don't oh, know why. Minus x. Okay. I forgot to put 2. Or do you think you're ready to show off yet? Show. Not yet. Mm -hmm. For H, <coughs> for, for H, negative 2. That's right. I got 18. All right, let's see what's up with that. 
You said for the negative two. Yeah. Okay. So uh, negative two cubed. Like that's why I like put parentheses there. Make sure that there's a negative involved. That it doesn't get lost track of. Negative two squared plus negative two times two. Might as well work for us right here. We have an exponent, another exponent. Multiply or raise it to the third power means to multiply it by itself three times. Negative two, negative two, negative two. So negative two times negative two is what? Four. Times negative two? Eight. Negative eight. Okay. Um, negative two squared. We did negative two squared as part of the last problem. Negative two times negative two is positive four. That's 16. Times four is 16. Those are all at once now. And negative two minus two. Minus four. What's that? Okay, negative eight plus sixteen is eight. Minus four is four. Four. Sim, did you catch? One of you? Just negative times the negative. But it's a negative times a negative times the third negative. Okay. So there's three negatives multiplied together. Questions? No questions you're ready to show off now? No? Yeah. Tyler? Um, so, we're going to go in, will, will it be a functions test? Like, It'll be something like, like this. Like a quest, something like that. Well, no. I'm not sure the answer to your question is, you're going to have a question like this. Some today? Like one of these today, and I'm a little over for you. Oh, then yeah, I'm fine. That, I'm perfectly confused. It's also going to be a question about Simplifying an expression. Just right. make sure that's okay. So that just kind of goes back to what we were doing last time. I wanted to see a little bit. Actually, you know what? For this class, grade six, he like did pretty well. We can take that question off if you'd like. For the functions? No, there's a there's another simplifying expressions question. Yeah, we can take. This class, for the most part, you know, there's like lots of nines and tens out of ten. You can take that one off if you want. Yeah. Okay. I'll leave it up there. If you want to try it, and I'll just rate it for fun, right? See if you've improved. That's fine. Uh, or you can just ignore it. Okay. So the simplifying one you can ignore. You can just do the function one if you want. Okay. So since today isn't like a real real test, can you use that both for calculators? No, because I want to see. Okay. You know how you would do if it wasn't that much. The thing that's different is it's not nearly as impacting on your grade. Okay, other questions? Sounds like we're getting ready, so as we're ready, if you need to borrow a calculator, do something, please. We'll go ahead and do this one real quick. Okay. Right. We're going to distribute the negative 2x to the 3 and the 5x. Negative two x times three. Six x. Negative six x. Negative two x times positive five x. Yeah. Six. Three x times negative two x. Negative two x times negative x. Minus six x is negative three x. Put the negative ten x squared out front. Doesn't have to be out front, but it's just a habit. Minus three x. Negative eight minus six. Negative fourteen. X squared minus three x positive. And here we go. We're going to plug each of these numbers into the function and see what happens. Okay, 2 times negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 plus 1. 2 times negative 2 times itself. That's going to come out to be positive 8. Okay. Uh, negative 3 times negative 2, positive 6, plus 1. 12, 13, 14, 15. 15. I got a zero. Now we can take out the negative twos. I'm just going to.
going to go ahead and do this if you care to pay attention. That's for you. Negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1. That's 1. That's 2. That's 2. Uh, negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. So you get a plus 3. And then we have plus 1. That's just there. Plus 1 at the end. Plus 1. Plus 1. 5, 6. Now zero, zero should be pretty straightforward. Zero, zero, right? Zero minus zero plus one. I think I got all these right. I put one in here. One squared, that's one times one, two times one is two. Negative three times one is a negative three. Two minus three is negative one, plus one is zero. Guys, yeah, right. Right. So I'm wondering if it was the combination again. You might. I mean, I might. Uh, well, if you were like, I guess depending on how unfinished it is. I only, um, I got uh, almost all of it done, but I didn't get, um, I didn't get to do the last, um, the one, what you just did. I didn't okay. get to do that. Just saying Everything else I got done. You may lose credit, but just keep in mind that these homework reviews, Though I treat them seriously, and I, I want you to not use your phones because I want you to treat it like a test. It's also not like a test because it's not a big part of your grade. It's big enough that you shouldn't just not do it. It takes zeros all the time. But it's not so big that losing a point here and there is gonna make that big a difference, okay? Oh, I've got them all right. It's worth, like all of these together are 5% of your grade, okay? So if you take a, Three out of five, or a four out of five, every now and then, with lots of five out of fives, then really not going to see that much of an impact on your grade. It's going to be like a ninety-two instead of a ninety-three. And if you really don't like that, that's the case, and that you're in that position, and you have a ninety-two instead of a ninety-three, then we can work out some extra credit to, you know, to make up that difference. So, and it's just for informational purposes mostly. Uh, it does go in the grade book, and it's not that big of an impact. So we don't need to stress about it, don't need to sweat it, take it seriously, but don't take it too seriously. We need to stress out. Okay. Other questions at all? Okay. Well, let's take out our notes then. Concept right? oh. into this place we usually call x. We have the input, the input numbers to x. And so then what do we call the number that we get for g, do you think? Output. 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 Input and output. Okay. Now functions can be a little more complicated than that. Um, like they get more complex than that, but they start at that basic level. If we put something into this function, what do we get out? That's it. Then we start to look at, well, how does this function behave, and what does it have in common with other functions that are like this function? Okay? Can we categorize these functions into 
different groups and see what similarities they have. Right? So this goes into a group that we call quadratics. That would be any function where you have x squared in there, right? and nothing bigger than that. Called quadratics. Quadratics. Not a big deal. I'm not going to expect you to know that for a little while, but it's just a little tidbit. Um, here's another way that we can keep track of this function inputs and outputs. This goes in, and this comes out, and this goes in, and this comes out. Here's another way. To, to keep track of this, this pair, this input-output pair, we can do it like that. Does that look familiar? Yeah. It's just what we call an ordered pair. Input-output. That's the order. Input and output. Another input output pair, negative 2, negative 5. Negative 1, negative 5. So negative 1. See where I'm going to this? Yeah. We could, we could keep track of it in a really strange way where we put all the inputs that we use over here. And we put a bunch of outputs over here. Negative five. Uh, yeah, negative seven. We got negative one. Negative two. Okay. And then we can just go like this with negative three. Goes to negative one. Negative two. Goes to negative five. Negative one also goes to negative five. Zero. To negative one. One. Seven. And two is 19. Any way you can think of to tell me what this input gets turned into, what output it gets turned into, another way that we can represent a function. Now, this is a less common way to represent functions just because it's crazy and messy. These are pretty common. And another really common way to keep track of these inputs and outputs, a little thing called Graph. Graph. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because, for some reason, students see a graph and they think, oh, this is terrible. This is awful. It's just another way to keep track of these inputs and outputs. Okay? You can tell if it's a function if it's a straight line. No, but close, I think. If it goes through the origin. No. That's well, that's what our teacher last year taught us. If it's constant. Know. Well, maybe kind of. Uh, so this axis is the x-axis. It's our input axis. And here is our output axis that right now is called g. Sometimes it's called y, sometimes h, sometimes g. So what, what is this? Question. Grid. Okay, so it's a grid, but um, so like x is first. Mm -hmm. So if you have g, you still have to do x first, though, right? Yeah, because it's not in like alphabetical order. It's in input output order. Yeah, so x is always first. Whatever the input is called is first. We can call just like we're calling the output g, or sometimes we call it y. We can call this oh. s. Okay, that makes sense. But a lot of times it's called x. Even when we change the name of y, we usually still use x. Okay. Yeah. It's a coordinate plane. Coordinate plane. Uh, now, what does coordinate mean? Um, input and output. Uh, kind of it means coordinate. Co there's co usually means like things working together, co is two, there's two, and input and output. Pretty much does the job, yeah? Like when you have the degrees on the map, you have to tell both degrees or like north and west, but on the grid it'd be like negative something or positive, comma, negative something or positive. Right. Grid. So those are, I mean, there's lots of different ways to give coordinates. We've got coordinates for our planet, uh, which we give in several different ways. 
uh, usually two pieces of data, some kind of a horizontal and also some kind of a vertical piece of information. Yeah? Is the coordinate a um, position? Uh, yeah, I mean, coordinate is like a way to give a position with two pieces of information because a lot of times we're working in two dimensions. We are working in three dimensions, we need three coordinates. But we're just working in two. Because there's only two things, input and output. Okay. This is called the Cartesian, Cartesian coordinate plane. That's not a tie, that should be a P. It was named after a guy with the name Descartes. It's called Cartesian. Yeah. All right. So let's put this information, right? I'll take this information, which takes up a lot of space, and I'll boil it down to one tiny point. And wherever that point is, it gives me the same information as this word bear or this part of the, the T chart. How do how do I tell you the numbers negative three for input, negative one for output? Right? Input is first. Okay. So how do I do this? Okay. So you're gonna go three to the right first. Three to the right first. Yeah. Because it's three to the right and then three. Three to the left. Oh, left. Three to the left because it's, right. it's negative one, two, three. Then you go down one. Down one. And put a point. So that tiny little point tells me all this information. Negative three goes into the function, negative one comes out of the function. All right, so we'll continue to do that for the rest of these. Three, four, five, negative two, negative five. Uh, negative one, negative five. Zero, negative one. One, seven. And well, look at that, 219. The way that I've drawn this Cartesian coordinate plane is doesn't have enough room for two comma nineteen, but it does tell me that when I plug two in, I, you know, this this point's going to be way up to there, right? So this is what graphs are useful for. I can start to see how this function behaves. It's not really a thinking thing, like a human being thinks and, and behaves a certain way, but we certainly use those words behave. How does it act? Okay. If I plug in two and I get 19, and just before that I plugged in one and I got out seven, and just before that I plugged in zero and got negative one, okay. What if I went to four? What kind of number do you think I would get if I plugged in four? A big number, a small number, zero, negative, Aiden? Why do you believe we would get a big positive number? That's what the graph seems to be doing, right? It's not doing it quite in a linear way. It's not a straight line, right? It's like, if I were to draw a straight line between these two, that straight line would not continue on through this point. It would go off in this direction. So it's getting even steeper, right? It's not a bit as a line, it's getting steeper and steeper. Uh, not only getting bigger, but it's getting steeper. It's growing even faster, right? So what do you think if I plug in five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? 10, am I just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger numbers? Yeah. yeah. You don't think it will ever come back down? No. Unless no. you go numbers down. I don't think so. Okay, let's, let's take the numbers down. Like, let's go to a number like negative four. No, but like the same number as we did before. Like, you go back to 10, and go back to five. Oh, unless you go backwards, I see. Yeah. And you start to see it go down. down, down. What about negative four? What if I do go back to negative four? What do you think I might get? out for G if I put in negative four. You think it'll keep going up? You think it'll go down? Because it's negative? Okay. Anybody want to guess what you'll get out of the out of this function if you plug negative four into the function? Zero. Triangle? I see a triangle. Negative four. Yeah, it's negative zero. You're guessing exactly what number I'll get out if I plug if I plug in negative four. Guess. You want to guess first. Zero. You think zero? Yeah. Okay. We got a guess of zero. Oh, I'm guessing zero. Take a look at this graph just 
its appearance alone. Five or six. Negative I would two. say it looks 27. Five. Wait, 27, wait. we have a guess. Negative two. two. Wait, which, it's which dots are we seven. talking about? I think seven, eight. Negative eight. four or four? And the question oh, here is, four. if we plug in negative four, right, seven. what do you think we'll get out? And it says seven. Wait. Is it yeah. two? No. 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 One. Three. Uh, this right here, where again, if you plug in negative four, what do you think you'll get out? I think you'll get negative three. Okay. Aiden, explain why you think seven. Seven. So you just plugged it in. That's not a guess. Yes, Molly? Um, I'm thinking like somewhere between like one and like four or something. Somewhere here. Yeah. Okay. Because um, I'm just like guessing because on there for uh. It's for like negative three, mm -hmm. it turned out to be negative one. For negative, negative two, negative it one. turned out to be negative five. So I'm seeing that like once it gets um, oh, seven. I smaller, get it. it gets bigger. It's seven. Okay. Seven. Other than just plugging it in, Oliver, why do you, why would you guess seven? Uh, because it's like negative five and then negative five and then it's negative one and ah. negative one. So Oliver's saying, look at this symmetry that we have, right? Like this mirror reflection of one side onto the other. Here's a point at negative five. This one's also, or sorry, negative one. This one's also down here at negative one. This one's down here at negative five. This one's also down here at negative five. And if we were to continue that, oh. you know, pattern, we might guess that as we move to the left of what seems like the middle of this thing, this graph. Maybe when you plug in negative four, you get out seven. Just like when you plugged in one, we got seven. Yeah. And I know at least two of you have plugged negative four into the function and gotten seven. 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 We can try it out. Negative four squared. Two times 16 minus 24 minus one. Two times 16 is 32 minus 24 minus one. 32 minus 24 is 8, minus 1, 7. Wow. Yeah. So it seems like this graph has some kind of a, set of, like a mirror image, like a line of symmetry. Quint? I have a question. Wouldn't it be just like plus 24 because it was plus 6? 6 times negative 4. Yeah, but wouldn't it be plus 24? Nope. 6 times negative 4, negative 24. Um, okay. Minus four. Right? I gotta I gotta make sense of that negative being there. If it was a positive four, then we'd have plus six times four would be positive twenty-four. But plus six, six times negative. Okay, that's well positive times negative. Yeah. Negative. When you said negative four, I thought you were talking about the negative four of the square root of four. We'd have to have a third variable. So like 2x plus 5y equals 3z. There's three variables there. That's, there's an example. Um, what do you think is going to happen? Like we, we talked about if we plugged in big numbers like 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What about negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8? Think it'll go down, or do you think it will continue this mirror image? It'll go up. Mirror it'll go image. up. I think it'll mirror. Okay. It has so far. Um, what if I plug in one half? What kind of a number do you think I'll get if I plug in one half? Three. We're thinking three? Three point five. What are we basing this guess on? Three, yes. Seven divided by two, okay. So somewhere between this negative one and seven. We do. 
We also have some class left. Zip up before I ask you to, the more I just want to keep talking, dragging class out. Okay. Uh, for homework, what I want you to do is take those original three that we got from last class and do this. Make a little, make a graph. You don't have to do all this stuff. Make the coordinate plane. Turn those inputs and outputs that we, that we got into time. points. So we don't have to like redo all the like. No. Oh, okay. That's that's simple. So wait, what now? Can we just put like make a graph like so? See how the take so these from last time. And take the graph. So we take those inputs and outputs and make them into points on the coordinate plane. Okay. You follow like I did. Just two perpendicular number lines like that. Thank you.